So one really big issue, whether we're running Exchange on-prem or Exchange online, one really big issue for us to deal with is security. Email is a huge attack vector for phishing, for malware, for spam. It becomes a major, major threat. And so we need a way to secure our email. Well, we can do that through um, Office 365 using the, let's scroll down here to our admin centers, using our security admin center. Now, uh, previous versions of Exchange, you'd go to the Exchange admin center and you could manage it there. But a lot of that is moving out now into this security center, which gives us, honestly, a better way of dealing with it. So let's click on our security center and security and compliance center is going to come up office 365 security and compliance and here you're going to see a whole bunch of things dealing with security and compliance as a whole that encompasses way more than just exchange but we're specifically going to look at exchange so we want to come to threat management and click on threat management and here's going to be a real quick overview dashboard how we've protected your organization in the last seven days threat protection status threat management malware detected in email top malware likely spoof domains so it gives us a real quick dashboard that says hey this is what's going on right now now you can get to your threat management policies from here or from here so we're going to go to our policies down here because it's going to give us a few more things we can look at. So we have an anti-phishing policy. We have an anti-spam and an anti-malware policy. And you'll see several other things here. Configuration analyzer. Uh, identify issues in your current policy configurations. Preset security policies that we can use as templates. We have specific rules we can set. So we're going to go to... Our let's start with our anti-spam policy, and we'll look a lot, take a look at our anti-spam and our anti-malware policy, and that should give you enough to get going with it. You'll see over here, by the way, a description of what it is. So let's click on our anti-spam policy, and in our anti-spam policies, we can see we can create a policy, create an outbound policy. So this is going to monitor incoming messages for spam. This is going to monitor our outbound messages. And you're also going to see that we have some policies that are preset. And notice the priority here is the lowest. It doesn't mean these are low priority and that we don't care about it. What it means is we can set multiple different policies and the highest priority policy is going to take effect. So we can have a default spam filter, but then we can create another policy for a specific group and we can bump that up so it's a little higher priority. So that one will take effect for them and then this will still take effect for everybody else. That's why that says lowest. Also notice that the option to turn these on or off is disabled. These are always on. All right, so let me expand my default spam policy and we'll just take a look at our settings here. This is going to give us a real quick overview of it, but we're going to edit policy so we can look at this a little closer. So we have the name, the description, and then here are the different areas of the policy. Spam and bulk actions, allow lists, block lists, international spam, and spam properties. Now, as we dive into this, let's actually expand spam and bulk actions here because I want to show you something. We have spam and high confidence spam. Phishing, high confidence phishing. Okay, what are we talking about here? When a message comes in, the Exchange Online Security will analyze that message and it will assign points to that message based on different things it finds in it. If it gets up to a certain level, it thinks it's spam. If it gets up to a higher level, it's pretty sure that it's spam. So that's what these are. Spam says, yep, I think this is spam. High confidence says, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is spam. That's going to come into play a little bit later on. Same thing with phishing and uh, high confidence phishing. All right, so if we think it's spam, what do we want to do to it? Well, we can add a header, pre-append the subject line, redirect to an email address, delete, quarantine, or the default is moved to a junk folder. For something that's high confidence spam, we're actually doing the same thing. We're moving it to a junk folder. We do have other things we could do with it. We could set it to you know, delete 
uh, spam when it if we're highly confident that it's spam. Or we could redirect it to a specific email address where we could have somebody else, maybe one of our security officers, go through and check it and then go ahead and forward it on if it's legitimate. So we have the same thing with phishing and then bulk email. All right, select a threshold. So this is for bulk email. One marks the most bulk email as spam. Nine allows the most bulk email to be delivered. We kind of default that to seven. So if you're getting bulk email coming in that you don't want, you can lower that threshold. If you're getting things incorrectly flagged as bulk email, then we can raise that threshold. The default is just there for us to begin with, and we'll probably fine tune that as we go along. How long do we quarantine spam? And then are we going to add anything to it? Safety tips are on or off. We can turn those on for a little more information. And that's information that's going to be applied to our users or it's going to show up for our users. And then here are zero hour auto purge. If we click our little information item there, it'll tell us a little bit about it. And we can turn those options on or off as well. All right, so that is our first phase. Here we go, spam and bulk email actions. We can also set specific allowed list. So these are people who are always going to accept mail from either from senders or domains. Now, in my experience, always allowing works okay. Always blocking does not. So we can always block, and we'll talk about that in a second, we can always block a specific sender or a specific domain. Now normally when we do that, it's because something came through, we've decided it's spam, we don't want to see it again, so we try to block it. Now why I say that doesn't tend to work well is because if it's a dedicated spammer, they're just going to switch their address. And they'll send the same thing from a different address or from a different domain. So block lists, I've never found particularly helpful in filtering out spam. Now, allow lists we use for a different reason. An allow list is when something comes in and it's been flagged as spam and we don't mean for it to be flagged as spam. It shouldn't have been. It's a false positive. Then we can allow the sender or allow the domain. Now, because they are not intentionally trying to spam us, this actually works fairly well. If I have something that comes in that uh, generates a false positive, I don't want it to do that again, then I can go ahead and allow it. All right, international spam. We can filter messages out or filter out messages from specific countries or regions or written in specific languages. Not a good thing if you're an international organization, hence the reason it defaults to off. However, there are times that spam tends to come in specific languages or from specific regions, depending on what's going on over there, depending on if we have some spammers that are trying to route things through there or whatever. So if we want to block specific languages or email from specific countries or regions, we can. This is moderately effective sometimes, in my experience. It is not my favorite way to block spam. I would rather block it through the heuristic algorithms that Microsoft runs in the background rather than blocking based on specific languages. It may stop that specific language or email from that specific country or region, but if I'm an international organization, that's really not that helpful anyway. So I think there are better approaches, but it is available. All right, spam properties. Now, remember I said that spam is identified ba uh, based on a specific score. The spam filter will look at specific things in the email. It will add a, it will assign point values to it. It will add it up and then try to determine if this is spam or not. Well, we can manipulate that a little bit. So right here, increase spam score, specify if to increase spam score if any one of these things are valid. Image links to remote sites, URL redirects to another port, URL to .biz or .info websites, numeric IP address in the URL. So what you can do is you can turn these on and then if a message comes in that has this particular characteristic, it will 
bump up that spam score, which means it's a little more likely that it's going to show up as spam or maybe move from spam to high confidence spam. Now you can leave this off, on, or test. And what test does is it doesn't actually take effect. It just kind of logs and lets you know uh, what effect that would have. And that can become really useful when you're playing around with this. You can run things in test for a little while and see if it would make a difference. Make sure it's not going to be too aggressive and you're not going to generate a bunch of false positives before you actually switch it from test to on. So increase spam score if any of these things are the case. Mark is spam if, now this doesn't increase the score, this just says, hey, this is spam, if any of these things are valid. So form tags in HTML, web bugs, can uh, apply a sensitive word list. Let me scroll down here a little bit more. And then several other things that will allow us to instantly flag this as uh, spam. Now down here, and we didn't show this before, let's go ahead and look at this now, test mode options. So test mode, remember, means we don't really, we don't have it take effect. We don't have it start filtering or blocking on that. We just want to see what the impact would be. So with test mode options, we get to find to define what do we want to do. None, we don't actually see much. We can add a header to the message saying, hey, if you would have been using this, this would have happened. Or we can send a BCC. So if I want to see what kind of messages would be blocked by setting any of these options or any of these options for increasing the spam score, then I throw it in test and I say, hey, send a BCC too. And then I can blind copy it to a security officer for review. Okay. So that's what we've got. Um, increase spam score, mark of spam, and test mode options. Okay, so this is how we'll configure our spam filter. Now we've just looked at the default spam filter right now. And this is always on and applies to everybody. Now what if I want to create a tighter spam filter for some people? Well, for that, what I would do is I would create a policy. And then I'm going to give it a policy name. We're going to say test is going to be our policy name. And then we've got all the same actions, right? Sp uh, spam and bulk actions, allow list, block list, international spam, spam properties. So all of these things are basically the same. We can, the same options, we just set them differently for whatever we want. This is a different part, applied to. So who does this apply to? And this doesn't show up as default because default applies to everybody. So this specific one, I'm going to apply it to, and then I'll hit my little drop down, and then I'm going to apply a condition and possibly an exception. So I can add as a condition where the recipient domain is, the recipient is, or the recipient is a member of. So if I've got multiple domains, then I can set some domains different than others. If I just have one domain, then I can say the recipient domain is my domain and basically it would be the same as raising the default policy settings. I can set it for a specific recipient or if I have a group of people that I want to apply them to and I have them in a security group or something like that, then I can say the recipient is a member of and select that particular group. And then that will apply this spam filter to that domain, that user, or that group. And then I can add an exception. So make this the default for the domain except for, and then I can add whatever. So everyone except a particular group is how I would create that. Okay, so that's how we create a new spam filter policy. And that should give you an idea now of how we can monitor and manage our spam protection. What about malware? Let's go ahead and take a look at that one as well. So let's take a look at our anti-malware. And once again, we have a default anti-malware policy. And we'll just take a look at that malware policy. There we go. Click on it for it to come up. So here is our policy and we can edit, delete. We can't delete or increase or decrease. This is the default one, but normal policies, we could edit the policy, delete the policy, 
increase, decrease. All right, so let's edit this policy and just see what it's going to look like. So we can set a name for the policy. Policy detection response. If malware is detected, what do we do? Do you want to notify the recipients if their messages are quarantined? So we can say, nope, I'm not going to notify anybody. Yes, I'm going to use a default notification test uh, text or yes, and I'm going to use a custom notification text. So common attachment types to filter. Do we want to turn this uh, on? Will email with filter detach emails with specific attachment types will be triggered? Um, or not. We'll allow any type of attachment as long as it comes out clean when we run our malware scan on it. Malware zero hour, hour auto purge protects your users by automatically taking your policies actions to quarantine messages with malware detected after delivery. We can set specific notifications, notify internal or uh, external senders if they've been flagged as having malware in their mail uh, messages, notify administrators, do custom notification text. Uh, text basically means set the message type say what you or set it what you want it to say and then who are we going to apply this to so this is the default so we don't need to set it to apply to anybody but if this was a additional policy for another group then we'd probably want to be able to do that so this actually you'll notice has a few less options we don't define what malware is we just set the detection response if we want to filter specific types of attachments. And then who do we notify if malware is flagged? And then that malware scanning engine is maintained and updated by Microsoft since we're using Exchange Online. Nope, don't want to do any ins. Whoops. Let's try that again. Yes, I want to close and not save any changes. Okay, so Remember, these are now being managed in the security and the compliance uh, security and compliance admin portal, and they are much more comprehensive. And it actually gives a really great way to manage potential threats to our Office 365 system.